Blessed be God who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel. The Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We are truly sorry, and we seek your forgiveness. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide with you and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, 
You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. As sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, 
much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus was baptized, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights. And afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I recently had to go to the doctor for an exam. And as the nurse was reminding me of my appointment a few days beforehand, she said, oh, and by the way, we need you to fast for 18 hours before your exam. And I said, oh, okay, I think I can do that. And I started counting backwards. And then she said, oh, and no coffee either. <laughs> Oof. Uh, 
So I counted backwards and realized that being about two o'clock in the afternoon, I would have to stop eating until my, my uh, doctor's appointment in the morning. And if, if Satan had showed up and said, if you say the word, I'll turn the stones outside the doctor's office into bread, I have to admit that I would have said yes. <laughs> because I'm not Jesus. We know this story really well. We know this morning's gospel story very well because we read it almost every year and we hear about it every year and it's one of the most famous parts of Lent. It is the reason, the, the way we explain what we do in Lent, the inspiration for these 40 days that we have begun this past Wednesday that we will go through until we get to the 2nd of April and Palm Sunday before we enter into the Holy Week. Lent is a time of preparation based on Jesus' own preparation for his ministry. Jesus goes out into the wilderness right after he is baptized not to purge himself of something. Although that is one reason you might go out into the wilderness and fast. But Jesus goes out into the wilderness to focus, to bring himself into oneness with God in a deep and profound way, to focus himself on that which is the most important. I had a friend in, when I lived in St. Louis who discovered a small company called Soylent. And not the one from the movie that you're all thinking of right now. <laughs> But a company called Soylent that made uh, basically meal in a bottle type shakes. You could, you could drink this shake and you didn't have to think about eating. You didn't have to think about what you were going to make for dinner, what you are going to make for lunch. All you had to do was mix it up, drink it, and that was it for the day. Or for that meal at least. My friend told me that he was using this uh, meal replacement shake. And he said, it's, it's lovely. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to make dinner. It's make lunch, make dinner sometimes. It's, it's simple. And I have those t that time that I would use making food and eating it back to focus on other things. Jesus goes out into the wilderness, into the desert, into the heat and the cold and the nothingness and the nobody to focus on God and what God is asking of Jesus in his life from that point forward. What will happen in the next three years and how they will culminate in Jerusalem and in the tomb. We started doing Lent in the church almost 1,700 years ago, by all accounts. Because we realized how important Easter was. And as we lived into our Easter every year, into that moment of resurrection, we realized that it was so important that we had to get ready for it. We had to prepare ourselves to focus again on what was important, to train out some of those distractions. And we looked to Jesus, as the church always should, to tell us how that would work. And we read this story about Jesus going in to the desert to focus anew on what God's love means, what God is doing for what God has created, and what God is asking in return. And the church, we the church said, we will do the same for the same amount of time. Many of you know that I was in California last week for my grandmother's memorial service, which happened on Shrove Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday. And after the memorial, which was a morning room memorial, we were um, kind of hanging out in her house for the last time. And much of my family, which is culturally Catholic, if not practicing Roman Catholic, 
uh, realized at that moment that it was Shrove Tuesday. It hadn't occurred to them until about 2.30 in the afternoon that t the next day was Ash Wednesday. And so one of my um, relatives started asking everyone, what are you giving up for Lent? What are you giving up for Lent? What are you giving up for Lent? And I'm not sure if she was just curious or if she was trying to get an idea of what she should do. But it's one of those things that becomes a ubiquitous question around this time of year. What are you giving up for Lent? When I lived in St. Louis, it was that and fish fries. Every church that you could shake a stick at. We tend to focus on the fasting. And we think of it as purgative. Often we treat it as self-help in some way. You know, we, we will fast from food. And maybe we'll lose that last pesky 10 pounds. We fast from coffee, because we think it will make us drink only half a pot in Easter, rather than a whole pot or a pot and a half. Or we fast from chocolate, or we fast from swearing or whatever it is because we think it'll make us a better person when the focus that jesus took was not getting rid of things because they were bad but getting rid of things but fasting so that he could focus on what was really important if we fast we fast from that which distracts us, that which keeps us from focusing, keeps us from remembering what God has done for us. Some people who are smarter than I am have said that the point of fasting in Lent is actually not that we succeed, it's that we fail. Because whether we succeed or we fail, whether we remember that we're not supposed to drink coffee during the week and only on Sundays at church and accidentally order a caramel macchiato on a Thursday because we've forgotten that it's Lent, whether we forget that we're not eating chocolate and we pop that Hershey's kiss in our mouth, or whether we make it all the way through Lent without ever violating the, the fast. The point is to keep in mind God's grace. If we, if we fail at our fast, the world doesn't end. Jesus still rises from the tomb. We still sing the A word on Easter. I almost said it. The world, God's love goes on if we break the fast. If we don't quite make it to the 40 days. God's grace is still with us. And some people say that's the point. Jesus succeeded in fasting for 40 days. But that's Jesus. If we break our fast, God still loves us. He still asks us to focus on what is most important. God's love for us, to us. And from us to God and each other. Are we focused on that? Lent asks us. Where have we not been focused on God's love for the world and everyone in it? Where have we not? Where have we lost focus on doing justice? On loving mercy? Where have we missed where is our focus become fuzzy on walking humbly with our God? In love with God and with each other. That is the question of Lent. That is the purpose of the fast. The fast is secondary. That focus, that renewal of that which is essential to God and to us. As followers of Jesus, that is primary. That is what the fast is for. When Jesus and his disciples walk through a field and pick a bit of grain on the Sabbath so that they have something to eat and they get criticized for it, Jesus says to those critics, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. 
The Sabbath's secondary. Life and love and the people God, that God loves are primary. The Sabbath teaches us what is important. And that is people, God's creation, love. And just in the same way, the fast teaches us what is important, reminds us what the focus of God's love is, and that is the relationship between us and God and us and each other. And so the question this Lent, the question that Jesus goes out to remember in the desert for 40 days, in spite of the prodding of Satan, the thing that Jesus goes out to focus on, to keep laser focused on for the next three years of his ministry that culminates in Jerusalem in a tomb that stands empty on a Sunday, is what is most important. God's love and our reflection of it. question this Lent when we strip everything else away what is the most important thing God's love and our reflection of it in thought and word and deed Amen We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sufferings, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, for this gathering, and for all the ministers and people. Pray for the church. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Scottish Episcopal Church, for Michael, the presiding bishop, the Office of Ministerios Latinos, and the Diocese of Eastern Oregon, El Camino Real and Hawaii. For Melissa, our Bishop Provisional. For Church of the Ascension in Seattle. 
Church of the Epiphany in Seattle, and St. Clement of Rome in Seattle. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. We pray for this nation and all in authority, for the welfare of the world, especially all victims of the conflict in Ukraine, those affected by earthquake, fire, flood, and mass shootings, for all those in the armed forces and their families, and for our enemies. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray for Judy, Kathy, Kathy, Ginny, Scott, Sharon, Jean, Ken, Teresa, Mary, Mary Ann, Phil, Jay and Bjorn. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for all those who have died. For Mike. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We pray for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, especially Karen, those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, and for those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Welcome to all. We're glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, however you are joining us, whether you're here in person or on our live stream, it's wonderful to have you. If you are new and you're attending in person, uh, please take a moment to introduce yourself at the back after the service. We'd love to get to know you better. Uh, just a few announcements I want to highlight, the first of which is um, our new series in adult education, uh, led by our own intern, Teresa Newell, uh, beginning, what, an hour and a half ago? Uh, uh, she started a series called The Transformative Power of Forgiveness that will run uh, this Sunday and the next two Sundays. And then after that, she'll give a, um, beginning on the 26th, uh, she will give a two-part class on 
uh, come and see a pilgrimage following the footsteps of Jesus, which will be detail detailing her recent trip to the Holy Land. Uh, I'm sure replete with many pictures. <laughs> um, so uh, I hope that you will uh, mark all of those classes on, on your calendar. All of those adult education classes happen across the way from, our end, from the door you came in to get into this building uh, in what we call our education building. Uh, so I hope that you will join us for that. That's 930 uh, in the Ed Building. Uh, there's also church school at the same time downstairs. Uh, you can come uh, drop the kids off for that and then come over and go to adult education. Uh, uh, we do godly play every Sunday that we have someone who is teaching. Um, <clears throat> for the next couple Sundays, it will be me. Uh, so I hope that you will, uh, if you have kiddos, send them down for that. Uh, we'd love to have them. As it is Lent, there are many things going on, both at the diocesan level and um, here at the parish. The next thing that's coming up here at the parish is Saturday, March 4th. Uh, is This coming Saturday is a quiet morning here at the church, 9.30 to 12.15. We'll begin at 9.30 with morning prayer. Then we'll have a series of reflections given by me. Uh, and then at noon, we will finish with noonday prayer. Uh, there will be coffee and various forms of refreshment throughout the morning, depending on what your Lenten fast this year is. Whether it's donuts or bananas, there will be something for you. Um, so I hope that you will join us for that. That's this Saturday at 9.30 uh, in the morning. There are lots of other announcements. I hope you will take your bullet home, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it. And if you have not signed up for the font, our online e-newsletter, you can do that on our website, www.redeemer-kenmore.org. Now... Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.